before we move for approval of minutes, uh, we need to go into an executive session to discuss the personnel issue, and then we'll be back to the table. <laughs> Nothing was resolved for the personnel issue. So we're going to move on to the approval of the minutes from the previous meeting. My name is Dodie McDowell. Uh, I'm a wildlife conservation officer for the Pennsylvania Game Commission. And the reason I'm here is, um, uh, you're all aware, uh, there seems to be an increase in elk here in Weedville. I know this is a township meeting, but I'm really here to address Weedville and the elk in Weedville. Um, you know, the Game Commission will take the blame. I'm not here to, you know, really discuss uh, the elk, how they got here, why they're here, where they're going, that stuff. Although I will certainly listen to any, any comments, complaints um, that you may have. But what I'm really here about is um, I spoke with one of the township supervisors a while ago in regards to elk here in the township. And, you know, one of the issues that I see um, is the artificial feeding in the winter. Is that the only reason you're here? Absolutely not. Um, but I do think it's an issue. Um, and, and really what I'm here to address is I have some information that I would like to leave, some brochures that we as an agency has created to explain winter feeding and why it's illegal. Um, it's not my intention to, to cite folks for illegal feeding of elk in the winter. I will, but that's not really my intention. My, I think the better way of doing it is through education. Um, so with that in mind, last year there were um, three individuals uh, in Weedville that I was aware of that was artificially feeding. None of them were cited. Um, again, that's really, that's kind of like the last, uh, the last thing I would like to do. Um, really, education is what I want to accomplish. Um, already, though, there are bulls coming back to those yards. Um, I've not seen any feed in those yards, which is encouraging, but it's going to take some time. Um, a mild winter, like we're having so far, without any, any a lot of food in the forest, they're going to be here for grass. Uh, but if this winter kicks into gear, and we do have people artificially feed them. They're not going to go anywhere. And you all know what happens then. They, they live here for the year. If we quit feeding completely, are they all going to go away? I don't know. 
It certainly can help. It's not going to hurt. But I guess all I'm asking is, I'd like to leave some brochures. Um, I can discuss um, and explain the, the, the real science behind feeding. Um, we have documented four elk that have died um, due to artificial feeding in the winter. Uh, we have prosecuted some folks, uh, but really, you know, the point that I'm really trying to make is I just want you to, if you know somebody's feeding, think about the long-term effects. Um, it, believe me, it's, these animals will survive the winters without feeding. Um, but what ends up happening is you folks have to then suffer throughout the spring, the summer, and the fall, and the next winter due to it. So I, I'm just asking that we all, you know, police your own ranks. If you're uncomfortable with turning in your neighbor, that's fine. Call our regional office. Report it anonymously. I'm not interested in bringing people into court to testify. If you know someone's feeding, let me know about it. I'll deal with it directly. I don't need witnesses. I just need to be aware of it. Um, I can't be in Weedville every day, and I'm sure not everybody wants to see me in Weedville every day. But I do want uh, just to ask respectfully from the folks here in Weedville, if you are aware of it, talk to your neighbor, and if you're not, let us know. That, that's really all I'm asking. Um, I want you to be aware that on February 11th, our wildlife vet, Dr. Walt Cottrell, is going to give us a talk at the Elk Country Visitor Center at 1 o'clock um, in regards to the science behind supplemental feeding. Um, it does kill these animals. There's no bones about it. It kills them. It's not going to kill everyone, but it, it, it will kill them. And what he's trying to do is just give you the, the science behind it. What's happening, why it's dangerous, why it's harmful to the animal. You know, I realize everybody that feeds thinks they're helping, but really they're not. And that, that's really the point we're trying to get across. So we've produced a brochure. I'd like to leave these. Um, I'd like to leave them here in the township building. People come in, have questions. They're here if you need more. Um, also, we've created a poster a few years ago. I'm not a big, uh, you know, I was told to put them around all the telephone poles. I don't even know if that's legal. I'm not a big fan of that. Um, I would, again, um, either leave them here with the township and you can place them where you want or tell me where you'd like them and I'll certainly put them up. Um, but this is an habituated fed elk on Winslow Hill and, and this elk is almost sticking his head into a truck window. That's just not good for anybody. Um, if you're not aware, here in bear season, we removed the antlers off of a bull here in Weedville because he was showing aggressive tendencies. Um, he may, he may have even ripped up a dog. We're not really sure. The local one, one gentleman's dog got tore up. I don't know if it was the elk or not. could have been. Uh, but the elk was showing aggressive tendencies. So one of the things we did was we put it down, removed the antlers. I think he left very quickly. He kind of went down to Balmer Town for a couple days. And actually right now he's probably a couple days away from death. He got hit the other night by a car. He's got a broken front leg. Um, we almost, used, almost euthanized him today. Um, we're going to give him a couple more days see how he makes up. But he's down in Caledonia. Um, but that really does work. So I, I'm just here to ask for your help. Um, some of you love elk, and, and I've already heard tonight some of you hate them, and that's okay too. I'm not here to make everybody an elk lover. But I think as a community we'll all be better off if you help police this winter feeding. So, okay? Anybody have any questions for me? Any complaints, comments? <coughs> Yes, sir. Uh, what, what recourse is there uh, about uh, people stopping in your driveway, blocking your driveway? Well, you know, that's that's a, I'm sure you've heard, that's a state police issue. Um, you know, the state police increased their, their patrols this past fall. Um, the Elk Country Visitor Center does have a video placed on their website with the state trooper explaining to the, the folks coming up here how to behave themselves. Um, you know, if, if I always tell people that it's really, the locals really don't mind the elk as much as they mind what the elk draws. I mean, really, let's face it, if we could make the people come and looking at elk behave themselves, the elk would be a lot less of an issue. But, uh, Do you have any type of signs available? Um, I don't. We as an agency don't have any signs, but... You know, I'm sure you know. I'm sure Walmart or somewhere you can get like. You talk about like no parking. Oh or? no! Uh, yeah, well, uh, there's some official signs you see down the meter run. Do not stop on the highway. Oh, that kind of thing. Yeah, you know, one of the gentlemen I was talking to today mentioned there is no yeah. L crossing signs through 555 through here in Caledonia. And, you know, that's something that ought to be addressed. I don't know if that goes through like the local representative Matt Gobbler. Uh, I don't know if that's a township issue, but you know, maybe that would help. 
I'm going to tell you something. I don't think any sign in the world is going to solve your problem. Mm -hmm. I was going down well, through really, Caledonia this well, fall. I don't want my driveway. They come yeah. back, back my son's house. And I watched a whole van load of people drive into a driveway, and the sign said private property keep out, and they drove right down and parked right by the sign. I mean, I don't think signs are going to help, but, you know. Yes, ma'am. I, I have a question. What about the people that, that, that try to scare them away with colored guns and paintball guns? Well, um, we issue rubber buckshot, um, and, and we can issue that to anybody who needs it. I'd be a little careful in the town of Weedville because, you know, I don't know how it would work out, but if you're shooting at an elk and you're scaring it, runs out on the highway and gets hit, you know, I don't know where you factor in liability-wise, but we do. We do um, provide that type of hazing. Um, I would rather people don't use pellet guns. Um, I can tell you that when elk get hit by cars and we donate them to families for food, 90% of them have BBs inside the skin. You know, I know people are using them. Um, we will provide rubber buckshot. That seems to be a safe alternative. Um, but people are allowed to haze elk, and I encourage that. I just be careful here in town with 255 and 555. And, you know, we don't need five bull elk here in Weed. Um, we don't need any elk in you know, I, Unfortunately, if I can say one thing, I, I regret not euthanizing the cow with a broken leg two years ago. Um, you know, I'm just, I just gave up playing God a couple years ago, and I just try to give these animals the benefit of the doubt. I didn't think she'd survive. She did, and, and she, I don't know if she'll ever leave weed, but I don't know if she can. But, um, yeah, that's one we probably should have just euthanized, but hindsight's 2020. But, um, Again, I just want to thank you uh, for your time and, and any efforts that you can provide. Our, our regional office phone number is in the brochure. It's also on this poster. Again, you know, if you want to just talk to your neighbor, that would be perfect. But if you're not comfortable with that, let somebody know, and I certainly will. Okay? Anybody else have any comments? Yeah, that rubber buckshot you give out, that's not any good for anything. And why is that? It's feet away from it, and it didn't even move it. Well, when you got something and you use it on 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 people for route, uh, yeah, it's actually control. designed. This is actually designed for for for, for, for humans and rides. Right. And it's not doing anything on elk. Well, I've never had an elk I've shot with it stand there and look at me. Well, uh, it did right up there in front of the house. It didn't run in front of you. No, sir. It didn't even move. <laughs> now I don't want to be smart. You sure you didn't miss him? Well, I don't know what to say. I, I, I've never had anybody complain about the rubber buckshot. See, you know, we used to give out those cracker shells. They would go out in the air and blow up. Well, elk got used to realizing that's just a noise and there's no pain. They didn't, and those quit working. But I've not had anybody tell me the rubber buckshot don't work. And they really one, work on black bears. You had the ones with the solid one in it did some good. But these are ones you gave up, given out now. Okay. Well, I'll, I can certainly look into getting the single projectiles again. Yeah, but it's like everything else; point. they're so expensive. They're like they're like five bucks a round for those single rubber bull. You know, we get the rubber buckshot at, at a much less price. But yeah, I know that's why you're giving them. Yeah, we yeah. had a lot of right here. I know, I know. And and hey, listen, I I understand what I mean, damage I, I is taking. Like I don't like that before. I don't know what it comes to do. We have to make more and more and more. So well, what's up now? What's up now? I mean, we, I'm hoping to address this this population with a hunt. Um, I'm not sure why we're only addressing two bulls in this whole unit in hunt season. That's up. I hope to increase next year. Um, and I really think we get some food in the woods and quit feeding over the winter. I think our pro I think the number of elk will do decrease here over time. Are they going to put any food plots anywhere else? Well, we don't own any land around here, so it's hard for us to put food plots on land we don't own. But I would certainly encourage anybody that has land that wants to put some food plots in. Um, we'll certainly assist with that. Yeah. Anything else for me? Anybody else? Yes, sir. So I know they cut brows over in the other side of the uh, river here, up on top. Do you think that draws them in or draws them out of it, town? Or is it, is it, it certainly way? helps. But I'll, I'll tell you what, this. Draw them into the area in the dead them? of winter, it's not going to draw them out of town when there's piles of corn in people's yards. Okay. I mean, I mean and again, I'm not, I'm not here to blame the elk and weevil on a handful of people. Believe me, that is not my point, but it certainly isn't helping. Um, you know, we our crew spent a month and a half up on up on uh, off of Redwood Street last year cutting browse. It attracted whitetails, it attracted turkeys. 
I don't know how many elk they attracted, but yeah, you know, again, why would yeah, they climb all up? Summer long and everything around here. They what just don't happen in the winter months? They have them all summer long and everything. Well, I know, I know, I know. What I chase them, they look at them last. Chase them, they go up the edge of the woods. Five minutes later, they're down by my garage again. Yeah, I, I know. What you're saying, if you chase them, that's not a rascal. No. Okay. Not no. No, but be careful because if your harassment causes something else, I can't stand up here and tell you that, you know, if you're chasing an elk and it hits, somebody's car hits it and kills somebody, I'm not saying they're not going to come after you. I'm just saying be careful. But at, from the game law standpoint, absolutely not. Okay. No, because, I mean, that's, that's, we encourage that in these cases. If and believe me, I do get calls from people saying this guy's harassing an elk, and I tell them, I tell them, hey, we hand out rubber buckshot. Why don't they, when they have the elk drawing, why don't they have three or four counties around here? Why don't they have 15, 20 lights for people to get picked from around here instead of one? And all the outsiders come in. we got to put up with all of the elk bullshit. Yeah, you know, I hear that a lot. Um, you know, when, when, they, when they created the elk hunt plan, um, they had eight open houses across the state. And that really never came up. That was not a comment that came up. The one comment that came up more and more was, it should be equal for everybody, and that's really what they that, what they it's went. It's equal with. for all the outsiders. What's that? It's equal for all the outsiders. Well, like last year, we had one. I think one El County person. We were lucky to get one. Yeah. You know, I, I will tell you this. Uh, Representative Gobbler has has created legislation. Um, you know, we give we we as an agency give one elk tag away now every year to a conservation group. They do whatever they want with it. They sell it. They auction it. They keep 20% of the profits, 80% come back to the agency for elk management. Yeah, they locked it for big bucks. Re Representative Gobbler has created legislation to allow, and I don't know what the words are, but the, the whole purpose of it was for people like Jay Township. And the, and the example he used was the Jay Township Fire Department. Because they are, they are being pulled more and more into Benazette with the increase in tourism that they're, they're seeing an economic impact. So he's actually created legislation that hopefully if it passes someday, that extra elk tech could go to someone like Jay Township Fire Department where they could utilize this money. But, you know, you know I, I don't know what to tell you. That's all legislation. That's not anything in housing. But... Yes, sir. If the elk is chasing you, is that harassment? <laughs> Depends on what you did to cause it. Right? <laughs> Anything else? Yeah, why is uh, archery allowed in elk season? It's pro you know, probably the way to answer that is why did we move elk season into archery season? Well, you know, elk season good. used to be further in the month, and you want, you want the honest to God, politically incorrect reason? Elk season used to occur over Veterans Day, which is a holiday, which causes the Commonwealth to pay all these game commission employees extra money because of the holiday, so that's why they moved it. Yeah, but this, this is before archery season is in there. This guy shot the elk. Oh, I got you. That's that conservation tax. Right, that's the one. He yep. shot that down in my field. Oh, I, I knew you looked familiar. Oh, okay. I know you looked familiar. <laughs> yeah, he, um, no, he shot that up in uh, well, Winslow Hill. I disagree with you on that. Really? The guy was down in the house Monday morning, and they said there were six down in the field. We're going right to go down and hunt. I said, sure. I'm glad to get rid of them. And they, they were back and forth up until Thursday looking for that elk up and down the road there. And they said they found it down below Burks. Yeah. Well, well what I can tell you was collared. And when the day before they shot it, it was on Winslow Hill on game line. We know that. Now, I can't tell you where it was when they shot it, but um, I believe that's where it was. That's where well, the blood was. We found well, blood. So I think it was a Thursday or Friday before they were down there. They were down in the field, and I went down on the tractor, and I saw the one that had the collar, and another one was with it then. There were six of them down there then. Yeah, you know why? You know I don't know. The the, the committee decided to allow uh, bows to be a lawful uh, implement during elk season. We've not had a lot of success. I will agree with you there. That's two years in a row we've had animals get wounded and not recover. To this guy's credit, though, um, you know we found this elk long after, seven days after it died, and this guy still right. took it. So 
to his credit, you know, because by then he could have went out and harvested another one and decided not to. But yeah, I agree with you. It's anything else? I'd like to leave this stuff with you folks if I could. Uh, I don't want you to take this personal, but I'm going to scoot out unless you have anything else for me. I thank you. I thank you for for giving me the opportunity. Call me anytime I can help. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.
for the discharge from the sedimentation basins. And there was public comment period, uh, DEP for the letter after they published it, or for the uh, permit application after it was published in the Pennsylvania Bullet. Uh, I talked to one of the engineers at DEP Leadville, and he told me they received no, no comments from anybody on issuance of the permit. So to me, I mean, it seemed like a very good idea because it's going to reduce the hydraulic loading on the sewer system. Right. It's going to alleviate these sewer authority charge in the water authority. And, you know, I would have hoped uh, the Board of Supervisors uh, would have been aware of that and maybe sent a letter to DEG in the future. Maybe you could be cog more cognizant. It was, uh, I, okay, I'm sorry. We were required to send something in there? Well, you, uh, you're not required. Okay, just uh, to help it, it along. It was prudent right. okay. in, in the best interest of people in the community. Did they get the permit? I talked to... Uh, yeah, it's on Matt Gabler's uh, representative, mm -hmm. uh, he comes to the township, I think, what, every fourth Thursday? Is that the day he comes? Or Tuesday? So it's a real opportunity to be with a uh, with representative here or a person with a direct line to him. Mm -hmm. But based on the information uh, I passed along to uh, Mr. Kennewell, uh, Matt did submit a letter to DEP and it was... Maybe it was just coincidental, although I don't think. He, he submitted the letter on the, uh, I think it was the 30th of November, and the permit was issued uh, December 13th. So the Water Authority is empowered to can put the silver <coughs> in the sedimentation basin in the Kersey Run, and I think it's, uh, hey, it benefits everybody in the community. I mean, uh, it oh, should I agree. Keep is, the there a, in check. is there a limit on the discharge or what they can discharge? Or you know, what I understand is uh, the volume is unlimited. There are constraints as far as uh, chemical contents or concentrations. They have to hold it in that pond for a certain well, time. Well, the pond, the main purpose of the pond is to get the, uh, uh, the solids to settle out. Right. You know, and what comes to the top is a clear liquid. Okay. And previously, the Water Authority did have a, uh, a permit for that, mm -hmm. but I understand they were permitted to recycle the supernatant off the top of the pond. So, you know, back in, I don't know, 2003, 2004, they chose not to renew the permit. Then DEP came along and said, no, you can't recycle the supernatant back into the, uh, the finished water. So then it had to be discharged, and lacking a uh, NPDES permit, it had to go to uh, the sewer authority. So now uh, that can uh, unload the sewer authority and be discharged to the stream. But, well, that's you cool. know, uh, I think it's one of the responsibilities of the supervisor would be trying to be aware of this. And, uh, it just seems like <coughs> it just didn't happen. Right. Well, I knew they were you know, <coughs> trying to get the discharge permit, but I, I didn't know where it got to in that process. Well, right. You guys. I would encourage you to give some input. You have Matt Gabler, you have Mr. Kennewell here. You can come up and talk to him. And you have DEP down there that uh, you can send a letter to. Anything else? Uh, uh, yeah, I guess one other thing. Uh, you know, uh, the Chapter 94 report, once again, it's being contracted out to the engineer. Uh, this is certainly within the power of the people to do this within the community. And, you know, I did it when I sat in the chair I and mean, I would encourage you to do it. It's not that difficult. You're going to learn a whole lot about this sewer system if you do it. And it's going to put $900 back into the community. But, you know, this is the third year in a row it's gone on. <coughs> and prior to that, it was always done <coughs> in this community, to my knowledge. I don't think we've ever paid to have that done. So I think it should come back to the community and somebody here, either an elected office or appointed office, start doing that. Okay. All right. I think that's everybody. Do. Okay. All right. Moving on to the approval of bills.
cost you said about around twenty six thousand dollars a year. Uh, I just think it would be smart for us to try to get a second opinion on that or a second price on that. See if we can't get that a little cheaper. It seems to be a, a lot of money. We don't yeah. have a lot of we don't have a lot of comp things or anything like that. There's the yeah, there was a call to claim that's making that rise from year to year, correct? Mm -hmm. So, I, I mean, we could get another price on it. I don't see why I could get another price I mean, on it. I don't know if we're going to. People get a couple of quotes. I mean, right. they might be higher, but I mean, $26,000 a year for a call for that. What are you looking into that? Right. Okay. She said she has the contract is already signed for the year. For the year. But yeah, we could definitely look around. I think when you're under a claim like that, like this is all raising each year due to a claim. That we may not. We could, it's worth a shot to price it out. I mean, it's think it's worth the price to shop it out, and then next year decide what to do with it. Uh, Twenty-six thousand dollars a year is insurance. Is it, we don't have a lot starting. Yeah, that was the first payment, right? Yeah, it's like a thousand dollars a month, and after that. Hospitalization. I see hospitalization for 4478 on page one, and once again it appears on page two. Is there an overlap in months there, or is that an error? No, that's for next month already. Okay, so we're paying yeah. two months. Two months on yeah. The second question I had was consolidated technologies. Uh, did you get an itemized bill for that? No. So they just submit a dollar amount, and that's it. You don't know what you paid in parts because they did over five thousand dollars worth of work for the store authority, time and material. And there was never an itemized bill submitted. Do you that, ask for itemized bills? That had uh, that bill had what labor and 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 it did. I mean, it, it broke down in labor and parts, I believe. When I so looked it was at it, no, it's it just a fan. It was broken down in some. It wasn't probably as, as much as I would have preferred it either. When I looked at it. It well, I, I think uh, maybe the board should set a criteria and write a policy to get itemized bills because they can be helpful in the future. I mean. Right. Oh, I agree. And, you know, you know what you got in a project, especially what went on down at the Calhoun pump station. You don't know what the parts were used to use. But you wanted to uh, repeat some of it. Do you agree that maybe the board should adopt the policy as far as well, itemized? Well, I'm sure, I mean, most of our bills do come in itemized. And like I said, that one I have to dig back out, but I thought it was broke down at least in the labor costs and, and part of it. Well, I would say when you issue an order to somebody, you tell them you want an itemized bill. Right. I don't even, it. I mean, I, had not, I, I didn't call for that or anything. I just the furnace quit working one yeah. day, and it was, you know, call a guy up and get him a fix. Yeah, well, it doesn't yeah. mean. Okay. Once again, there seems to be a pattern here. Okay. Okay, I need a motion to pay the bills for January 19th, 2012. I'll make that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Response. Treasurer's report. General fund checking $75,602.91. State fund checking $1,119.87. State fund insured money fund $4,706.41. State fund CD $38,736. General fund CD is $78,794, and the deposits for the month was $110,350.21. I see we got a check for $25,515.80 in the Grand Region. We didn't put that into the savings? It just came in. It's from the real estate transfer tax. Can you itemize what was transferred here? Is that just one transaction? Or uh, no, there were several small ones and one large one. EQT uh, gas bought a uh, large piece, $5 million or better purchase. So that was the majority of that. Then there were a few small other ones in there. But we do have that dedicated yep. to the yeah. I had a question on the uh, 
St. Mary's tax service, occupation privilege tax. Mm -hmm. Now look at the correspondence of James Allegretto or occupation privilege tax. Who's collecting that? Well, uh, that's something we're going to, same tax is going to end up, that's something we're going to have there in the old business. Um, originally, James Allegretto was going to collect it, right? That's the one. And because of this new changeover, it's going to, it's not going to be feasible for him to do it, you know. Yeah. I thought he was collecting it. I know he's not going to do it in the future. But how does St. Mary's tax service going to do it? They're always collecting it. St. Mary's tax service, yeah. Where's the collect? They collect that prior. They're collecting it? They were collecting it? Yeah. Jim had given it up to Jim didn't have it. Yeah, Farrenbaugh, Farrenbaugh is retiring. He was going to take it over for us, but... That's what the letter's about. You can't do that. Okay. Okay. That was always a pain in the day. But tax collector wasn't worth it. That's the amount of money you collected. Yeah, that's what the issue is with the ratio. So. Okay. Uh, correspondence. Number one, J Township Water Authority meeting minutes employee wage rates. Two, J Township Store Authority meeting minutes employee wage rates. Three, J Township Fire Department 2011 fire report. Four PA Fish and Boat Commission Habitat Improvement Project. Five Richard Gavazzi Auditor Resignation Letter. Six Chester Lundy Application for Auditor. Seven Don Zauer Application for Auditor. Eight Lynn Antonelli Auditor Resignation Letter. Nine Victoria Burlingame Letter of Intent for Auditor. Ten Robert Coppola J Township Water Authority MPDES Permit. Eleven Jane Delegato Occupation for Ridge Town. Can I ask what the Fish and Boat Commission Project is? It's in Burndale. Um, it's in Kersey Run. It's, it's a fish habitat somewhere above the, the bridge there in Burndale. I guess near the fire hall, maybe. I'm not exactly certain you guys know any more about it. Right above, just right above the bridge. I'm just going to put in some. You're saying the 255 bridge? Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, along that line, the Western Pennsylvania Conservancy gave the township some ground up there beside the first ball field. And the development of the, uh, the AMD treatment facility in Hollywood and the uh, likelihood of uh, that becoming a uh, fishable stream again. Uh, the Board of Supervisors may want to initiate a couple of letters named the Fish and Boat Commission. Is you who owning the property? Is there some development work you could do in the uh, stream habitat in that stretch of the uh, Bennett Branch? And uh, I think a lot of people around here would probably utilize it. But uh, we did get that deed, right, Keith? Sure. Uh, I think. I'd have to go back. And look. Yeah, take a look. Because it was a detached property. It was detached, right. East of 255. That's a whole piece of property up above, yeah. I remember doing that one. Yeah. I, I think, it did. Uh, it, it, Attaches to the ball field property. Yeah, but it goes up along the stream. Yeah, it goes towards the yeah. And another good person to contact would be Kim Bond for me over the counter. All right. Road maintenance report. You know, the pothole and mainly they just plowed act and kept track of the ditches. I think we should still have the truck maintenance report up there at Ingram's that way to keep track of parts that are needed and reorder to restock the parts that they're using out of this building.
somebody else going to put their name in for it? Or do we have to put that in paper? Or? That's, they're the only ones out there to collect it right now. Again, well, they have, they have the source, they're going to have all the employers. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they don't make sense. any money on that. What percentage they charge you? supposed to do this meeting, but he was moved to West Virginia two days ago, so I was just kind of thrown in here. Um, but basically what we're looking for is to get a use permit for the roads, uh, the township roads, in order to come through with the vibe trucks um, to do the seismic testing. Uh, basically we, we use the vibe trucks in the residential areas because we can't blast near the houses, so therefore we, we use the vibes instead. Um, Basically, I thought I was coming here today to actually pick up the permit. I thought, <laughs> and here you are. I thought the permit had already been delivered, and uh, I was actually coming here to pick it up um, in order to take it back and have it bonded. Um, and that's what we do. We bond the permits. We stand behind. If we do any damage to the roads, we prepare, we repair those damages. Or actually, I should say, you get, you get estimates on the repairs, and someone else repairs the damages. We don't physically do it ourselves. Um, but we would actually have a liaison who would work with the township supervisor to address any issues that they had with the highways that was caused from the vibes, and then we would get an estimate on that, and uh, in that bond we would, we would cover the cost of any damages that would occur due to that. So when we've had some seismic testing done in the past. I mean, is it you doing something different, or are you just doing it again as a separate company? Uh, we're doing basically the same thing. Um, the cable layout is different from in the past. In the past, we did what we call a two-dimensional seismic, and that's where they keep the cables right along the shoulder of the road, and we go along and dive. In this particular um, testing, we're doing what we call a 3D. In order to do that, we actually run a, a grid of cables across landowners' properties. Some of you people may have been contacted by some of our other agents in order to put geophones across your property. Um, and then we actually still go along the highway, but in conjunction with the vibing we do along the highway, we actually do shot points in the remote area. And this gives us a better reading of what's underneath the surface. We can see how thick the shale is. We can see if there's pockets of gas or oil. We're actually looking for the faults. Um, five years ago, we would look for the fault because that's where the, the pocket of gas or oil would be trapped, and that's where we'd want to develop. With the new findings that we have in Marcellus Shale, we're actually looking to see how, how thick the shale is and try to stay away from the falls so that when we go in and we develop the shale, we actually don't lose the gas from the fall. That doesn't mean we won't develop the faults, but we're going to do a process where we'll come through and we'll develop the shale first and then later go back and, and develop the other pockets for oil or gas in the steep. What area of the township are you going to test it? Um, they actually wanted me to get permits for the entire township so that we could go on every road in the township. So that's what I was So that's the intention to do the whole township then? Correct, yes. Yep. Now there are uh, PPV monitors and there's uh, survey crews that come out. In most towns there's a lot of houses that sit close to the road or right up on the curb. Um, we do a ha what we call a hazard survey and when the surveyors come through They'll either mark those points, and then if the PPV monitor feels that that point is too close to a residence and that it might not be safe to go ahead and vibe that, or they may vibe it on low force. So sometimes you may have a house close to the shoulder of the road, 
and you're thinking, wow, they can't really shake there. But what they'll do, they'll bring the trucks in and they'll put it on a low force, and it's a little bit softer vibe so that they can do that. Um, in the areas where the houses are back 300 feet or more from the roadway, then they'll go ahead and, and stack the trucks and vibe in full force. So the hazard surveys and the PPV monitors um, basically decide where and when they can vibe or if they're too close to a house. The PPV monitor does not work with this, the actual seismic crew. It's an independent company that's there to regulate them to make sure that they stay within the state guidelines and regulations. So it's like a check and balance system. It's not like they're employed under the seismic crew and they can just do whatever they want. So. Are you going to be doing this along NDOT right away, too? Or just the township road? Uh, we are. There's another individual that's working on the state highways to get the approval for that. Um, in this instance, like the time of year and the weather, we do have cables that sometimes we run across the highways which could interfere with plowing. Um, but on our last two, we just finished up from uh, like Kyler Town down to Phillipsburg. We used a wireless system. And it looks like we may be using a wireless system here as well, which would eliminate that. But if for some for some reason we did use cables, um, we would basically keep those cables from crossing the highway this time of year due to the maintenance of the highways. When do you anticipate starting the testing and what will the duration be until everything is completed? Originally when we came in, our goal was to get everything permitted and, stop, and start mid-January, um, but it's mid-January. And what has happened is Cytel has actually come in and increased the area, so they've expanded it a little bit more. So we're waiting for that permitting to finish up. Um, but they're looking by beginning of February, mid-February, to actually have the survey crews start coming through. So it's, we're hoping to get things rolling pretty quick. And we usually start east to west or west to east, and we'll start in the north, you know, northwest corner and go southeast. Um, we'll go one way or the other, but the surveyors will start and they'll cross the project. The drills will follow them, the mulchers and drills and then the actual line crew will follow right behind them. So it's almost like a leapfrog series thing. As they're coming across, the seismic chute is actually getting completed right behind them. Everything's leapfrog, so we just kind of move across and right out of the area. I know EQT is very oriented towards public relations. Is there anything on the website where you can understand what's going on here with this seismic testing and the live testing and just exactly what's going on here? I'm not. You can check out EQT's websites. They do have information on there about seismic testing. I don't know that they actually have one that designates your area or talks about your area. Um, but they do have one <coughs> in the past, and as they get to the point where they're starting, where they will do the seismic here, it usually does come up on the website so that people can look on there and be informed of what's happening. I do know that they've told us in the past that they're going to go start on the east side and go to the west. So we concentrate our permitting on the east side and we work west. And then we find out that they want to start on the west and go east. And then they're all over us because we're not done permitting on the west side yet. So things do change at the last minute. Um, you know, we try to work with them the best we can to give them the data and the information that they're looking for. Uh, here, there, and it's on the agenda here too, about uh, a watershed meeting. we are working with DEP here about Developing a watershed protection plan, and it encompasses what's mostly known as Burns Run and Jersey Run. Mm -hmm. The meeting is on the 25th at 6 o'clock. Do you think EQT could maybe have somebody come to that meeting and discuss um, their intentions in the watershed there? That's something I can go back and address them with. At this point, I'm not aware that anybody will be at that meeting. Um, I do know that I myself am a PPV monitor, um, so we do. You know, I work a lot with the water when they're actually doing the seismic testing. Um, so, I mean, I could go back and talk to the company and see if a representative could be there. Uh, of course, one of the Nathan here, I did a class here down in Pittsburgh. What's that? Uh, Nathan, the public relations guy down there. Do mm -hmm. you think I should send him an email with that similar request? Yeah, it wouldn't hurt. Okay. Um, like I said, I'm from Alexico. I'm not actually with EQT. So EQT may choose to send one of their own representatives out, or they may contact us and have one of our liaisons come out and represent them. Does the township have contact information for you? Board of Supervisors? Yeah, they do. Okay. I believe so.
Do you plan on using any charges? Not in the township. No. Not in the township. Yeah. What kind of charges? I'm sorry. They drill down. Oh. And we drill down 20 feet deep in the remote areas, and we put a 3.3 pound charge on this particular chute. Um, we can go up to a 5 pound charge. The permit allows us to. Um, but the actual depth we're looking for, we're going to use a 3.3 pound charge on this chute. Site health plans no use of the charges in the township? Correct. Yeah. Who's responsible for marking, uh, locating and marking uh, the utility lines? Um, that would be the hazard survey. We call it a hazard survey. Um, they mark out all those things. If there's any high pressure gas lines, low pressure. What about water lines? I mean, they do I'm water sure. lines, water wells. So how do you do that? Through PA1 call? I'm not sure how they do it. We actually hire a survey crew that comes in and marks all that stuff out for us. I don't us. know where they are. They have their well, way. My, my point is getting the, the, the water authority, the sewer authority, and who else is going to have to spend time to go out and mark those lines. Mm -hmm. Somehow it's section. done through GPS. They actually know where those lines are. No, they don't. Well, they say they do. Not water lines. Okay. They're sewer lines. Some of them. Maybe um, the sewer lines are better. They're newer. What we do is when we go through, even if there's like a water line that crosses a highway or something, we can't vibe on top of that or gas lines. And those are usually clearly marked because, um, like I said, I've done PPV work, and as we're going out, um, we have a GPS that we keep in our hand. And it may not be marked originally on GPS, but whoever the survey is that does that survey, I actually have flags that show me where those things are on my handheld long before the trucks ever get there. So, and we actually even mark properties if there's landowners or individuals that they don't want us to access their property. Um, they come up red that we're not to step on that property or access that property. It's the same as the water lines, gas lines, um, power lines. Certain, certain points come up near uh, high tense power lines and I want to drive close to those within so many feet. Do you have a, uh, a drawing or a plan? I, mean, I, I came to the township and wanted to look at a plan see where the size of gas is going to be in the vicinity of my neighborhood. Can I do that, or how do um, I find out? We can get that. Right now we call it a pre-plot because it's not set in stone. Right now they have a map that says this is where we'd like to go if all these landowners agree. If they don't, we may have to shift it this way or that way. So we do have pre-plot pre maps. Um, I don't have anything like that with me because I was under the impression I was coming here to actually pick up the permit and and take it back for the bottom. In your official capacity, ask for those plans. Jeremy, could you do it in your official capacity, ask for those plans to be presented here in the building? Sure. Robert Dewey? No, I would agree with that. Yeah. yeah. What about private water lines? Um, they're a little bit harder, but they're not normally out along the roadway. Um, if people have, I mean, if it's a city water, there's a city water line and they run back to the house. Um, if I somebody one more time. You say they're not going to use shovels. They will. The well, I've, I've seen contracts. Right. In the township. It depends on. Foot shot. I guess I'd have to look at the township map okay. for J Township, um, because if there's residents that are close to the township but their property goes out to remote areas, they may still be doing shovels there. Um, so I can't eliminate the whole township. There's a lot of rural. There's a lot of under, under Okay. In, in those areas, in what we call remote areas, if it's far enough away from residents, they will use <coughs> shop holes. So, well, unless, thank you. unless the farmer or the person actually requests that we just bring the vibe buggies into a field or somewhere, mm -hmm. drive down a logging road instead of actually doing the shot holes. Well, what company are you with? Uh, initially, I thought it was EQT, but you said... I'm EQT. with Alexico. E-L-E-X-I-C-O? No, E-L-E-X-C-O. Alexico. And where's your corporate headquarters? Uh, we're out of London, Ontario. That's our corporate headquarters. We're also <coughs> in Coney in New York. And uh, we have offices in Corning and Michigan. But you want to work with EQT? Yes. The last EQT time. is the one that has actually that sanctioned us to come in and do the side No, no. This is substantial. This one's different. Than uh, uh, the the so seismic testing that we had before uh, was on a Caledonia yeah. Road. And a couple other roads. This is, uh, you know, he's looking at the whole township. You're looking at the excess of a million dollar bond. Mm -hmm. And I would need to know how many miles 
with actual township roads you have. Yeah, that's one of the things. Now, the I mean. results of this, is it proprietary to EQT? In other words, if some other gas company wants information about the geology, would we have to live through all this again then? No, they actually, the other companies usually find out what's happening and they jump on board. Um, I know that we've already had a letter from Seneca that they're now on board. There's a couple other companies we're working with, Black Cat. Um, Black Cat? Yeah, Black Cat Productions. Oh, okay. That's not mysterious. Oklahoma. I don't think they're actually a developing company. They're kind of mysterious, to be truthful with you. Um, <laughs> it almost looks like a broker that bought up a bunch of leases that's hoping a big company comes in. They have someone to sell them off to. Yeah, I so know that one. It's, uh, I don't know that for sure, so I'm just speaking, yeah. you know, like you said, they're mysterious. Yeah. But they do have quite a big holding in the area. <laughs> they sold a bunch of Chesapeake. Mm -hmm. Actually, they're going to go up to $5 a minute. Any other questions? Yeah. I can come back and get it. Yeah, I'm going to have to come back. You're going to have to come back and get it. We're going to get it. We're going to see how many um, you know, miles of road you have, so we'll go ahead and get the lot for you. All right, All right. Source water protection meeting is scheduled for January the 25th at 6 p.m. and that's right here, right? <coughs> What time? Six o'clock? Six o'clock. Uh, all I need to do is that make mm -hmm. Well, it will be nice to clean, too. Would, I'll try to get there. Okay, we have uh, two vacancies for auditor, which we have to okay. make some appointments. Where is that? We have uh, Don Zeller, Chapter Lundy, We've both been in for the 10 day waiting period, and then just today we got Victoria Burlingame, uh, which couldn't be awarded tonight. We got the 10 days. And Seventh at six PM for the reorganization meeting. <laughs> uh, 
uh, and we advertise that for you. So they don't, they don't have to advertise it. Very good. Chester, you that?
Wouldn't any expenses fall under the township? <laughs> I guess that's my question. Be picked up by them, though? Depends on the overtime of the work or anything that needs to be done. Adding all this but up. any expense occurring to you because of what they're doing should be picked up by them, I would think. Well, we ask you. That, that's, that's the question on the table. provide compensation to the town. It's time for gathering all this material came together so you can see what you want to permit. I mean, you can pay landowners for the doing the site of the survey. I would have to check on that. Yeah, I mean, that's a big expense. Not <coughs> you get a meeting fee. They don't get paid for the hour. You can't let it all fall on the secretary to do all this work. Well, the secretary can't do all this leg work oh, anyway. Said, no. no. I mean, you're talking about three entities to have to go out and mark the uh, entire township. How is it done in other townships? How do they handle it? Maybe I'll call one of them and find out. Basically, our surveyors come out and mark everything. They don't usually use the township guys. I mean, if they're going to do it, but I, I still have reservations, how are they going to know where it's at? There's stuff around here. I'm going to tell you right now. I'm not pointing a finger at National Fuel, but National Fuel doesn't know where half their lines are. <laughs> you can't even dig in this township without them sending a crew down to stand there and watch it because they don't know where they are. I'm not sure how they do it. I mean, you'd have to talk that over with the surveyors further down the line. But the ones you're asking for right now is all the miles of the town. And how many miles of road do you have? In so we need to create a bond for the town. Uh, we can put that together and go for that. So we're walking here going on. Yeah. 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 Yeah.